last episode, I mentioned about how we got our first order for Allen Bradley PLCs from Mysore Cement. In this episode, I am going to tell you how Allen Bradley PLCs started actually growing in India and how we managed to execute the projects as there were a number of challenges that came up during the execution or even before the execution. After we came back from uh, Mysore Cements, uh, the next order that we got was from Orion Cements. Orion Cements, of course, was quite understandable because Mr. G.P. Sinha, who was their project manager, was the first one to suggest to us that we should tie up with Alan Bradley for their PLCs. But what was surprising was, subsequent to that, we interacted with ACC, who were putting up three projects at that time, and we interacted with them for the Alan Bradley PLCs. Though they were very much in favor of uh, the PLCs, uh, they mentioned to us that they have already given a letter of intent to another competitor of ours for static logic and that they could consider us for the next time. Fortunately for us, uh, what did happen was a little later, we were called by uh, ACC and told that would we be able to match the price that they have given for the static uh, logic for the competitor. Again, in this case, we did not know what the price was, what our costs are going to be, but then it was a very major order and uh, we actually thought if the competitor could make the static logic at that price, probably we should be able to do it uh, with the PLCs. And we agreed and because the fact that the competitor did not want to change it from static logic to PLCs, at the same price, we got the order from ACC for three of their projects. Subsequently, we got an order from Rajeshree Cement and from Malabar Cement and therefore we had a, a vast seven cement plant orders for PLCs and we were yet to execute any one of them. And we had a pretty big list of modules to be got from Alan Bradley, which was quite impressive and they were very interested in supporting us. At that particular point of time, uh, you know, imports, customs, they were all very important factors in India. And there was a case where if you imported something uh, which was in the restricted list of imports, the customs duty for that item, uh, especially for PLCs, it was pretty high. It was in the 50% range, 50 or 40% range. I, I don't remember the exact uh, percentage. But there was another provision which was called project imports, which gave the end user the facility to import whatever he needed for the particular project at a reduced import duty of 20, 20 or 25 percent because they felt that that particular subsidy should be given to encourage manufacturing in India. So that was the whole idea. Therefore, if we were to import the modules from Allen Bradley at the higher duty, and supply to the uh, end user and if the end user went directly to a PLC manufacturer outside India and imported the entire system from there, he would pay close to 20% lesser customs duty on the item, though the imported prices could be a little higher. Therefore, I mean, we felt that there was an opportunity for us to go to the government and explain to them why we should be given the concessional duty. It's very important to know how the project import duty works as against normal customs duty. Whenever a particular company wants to set up a new project and there are number of items to be imported, then what happens is the end user has to give the list of all the items that he needs to import for his project. It is endorsed by the Ministry of Commerce, JCCI in those days, Joint Controller of Imports and Exports. And then they were allowed to import that on a restricted basis because they would get a specific license for that. And then when it landed in customs, they would pay the concessional duty because the license would have been a project import license. And they would pay the concessional duty and take out the material and then use it for their project. That was how it worked. As against normal imports where if you just imported any item, you would pay the normal higher customs duty. So we thought that we should fight the case and we went to the government and actually worked with them and explained to them why as intermediary manufacturers, because we would be importing only some components from Allen Bradley, they're mainly their PLC modules, 
but would be building the entire system here, designing the system here. And therefore, we said that the prices would be competitive. And if the government is serious about wanting indigenous manufacturing, indigenous expertise to grow, then they should allow the project import duty benefit to us in the intermediary manufacturing. Obviously, a lot of interactions took place with both the Joint Controller of Imports and Exports, with the customs people, with the DGTD in those days. I mean, it was a very important department which controlled what could be imported and what could not be imported. And we worked with all of them. And then finally, they came out with a particular formula, which was quite fair. They said that, you know, the intermediate manufacturer, instance in our case, when we go and import the modules, we must get the list of modules endorsed by the end user. The end user will t tell them that this is the list of modules which are going to be used for the project for which they have placed the they, for which they have placed the order on us. Based on that, the item would be imported by us. And when it's imported by us, those list of items which will match the import license we, we get for project import will attract the lower customs duty or the project import duty at a much lower percentage. Then we would actually import these items and manufacture the equipment and go and deliver it to the client. Of course, we had to give a bank guarantee for the difference between the higher duty and the lower duty to the customs so that they are protected. At the end of the project, what we needed to do was we needed to give the list of the entire items that were used for the project within that list of license and get it endorsed by the customer. The customer would certify that out of the list of items for which the import license has been got for his project, this is the list of items that has been used. And therefore, he will give a certificate saying these are the project, these are the materials that have been used. Now, if the list matches, then of course there is no issue, then you know the project is closed. If it doesn't match, then we go back to the customs and then tell them that this is the item that have been used for which I mean project import duty will be applicable. And the items that have not been used, we have to pay the higher duty, the differential in duty we have to pay to them and close the case with customs and after which we will get our bank guarantee back. So this process took place about three to four months and for which I mean we have de deliveries were delayed. Uh, though you know for cement plants in those days, I mean deliveries of the order of nearly eight, ten months was quite normal and therefore I mean it was all within the time that was required. And uh, it was quite uh, interesting that we were able to get the project import duty for all the seven plants. And even though at the beginning we did not know whether uh, the orders that we got were profitable or not, at the end of it, because of the project import duty, the orders turned out to be profitable. And that's how, I mean, you know, we set a trend. In fact, I mean, subsequent to that, I mean, this is the customs and the JCCA, they actually uh, put this in their uh, manuals. And now project import duty is applicable not only to the end user, and to the intermediate, but to the intermediate user as well, intermediate manufacturer as well. So uh, that was how we executed the cement plant orders. Of course, we had an excellent team. Uh, we recruited a number of youngsters, and the entire team was a very young team, absolutely fresh. Some of them fresh from college, or somebody has some people having very little experience. But I think it was executed very well, and uh, we started expanding in the cement area. Around the same time, there was another big uh, opportunity for Alan Bradley that came up. Uh, Rashtriya Chemicals and Fertilizers, RCF, was putting up a plant. They had started their fertilizer plant and they had two plants, one in uh, uh, Trombay and one in uh, Thal. And we had an opportunity to tender for their energy management system, which we finally did win uh, after you know competing. And uh, that was the start of Alan Bradley's real footprint in India and how they started growing subsequently. Thank you.